Alright, so uh, right off the rip, I'm going to go ahead and show the outcome here. As you can see, fully interactive uh, loading screen with a progress bar. And when you come in, you can see that the AI is functioning correctly because the nav mesh is still intact. So, how do you pull this off? Well, um, for starts, you're going to end up having to use a uh, um, persistent level with a bunch of substreaming levels. And this is kind of a good uh, practice to get in anyways because it helps out a lot for tweaking things. Um, you, know, you can turn your lighting off. You, know, you basically create a different sub-level for each major group of things. Uh, Post-process one's really handy for quickly toggling on and off, which I don't have anything in it right now, but this is just for uh, demonstrative purposes. So, um, what are you going to need to do this? Alright, well, first things first, you are going to need to create a new game instance uh, uh, class here. And to do that, you just simply right-click, create a new blueprint class, and then down here, um, and if this isn't expanded, just expand it out and type in game instance. And you want to create it from this one right here, not from that. And uh, name it something fairly unique. Don't name it game instance. Name it, you know, something that you will easily be able to recognize as your custom game instance. In my case, it's just gi underscore test. So after you've done that, you're going to want to go up into your project settings and from there you're going to want to go to your maps and modes and toward the bottom you'll see game instance and this is where you'll pick the one that you just created so once you've done that you can go ahead and close out of this um, and that's that for now. Um, I guess we can go ahead and open it up. All right, this is what you're going to be making. Um, I choose to handle the load screen widget from a uh, game instance because in here, this doesn't get destroyed on level change. If you make, uh, even on a controller, if you do it on a controller, uh, if you do it especially in the level obviously or anything on the like, player character or anything um, they get destroyed on level change and so you would lose everything anyways so when you do when you handle the uh, loading screen widget from the game instance it's uh, it's safe from all that perishability so We'll, we'll get back to this in a minute, but essentially this is just going to handle the loading and unloading of it. This isn't necessary, by the way. I just put it in there because it would get reset to zero anyways. I forgot to remove that. Um, so, from, uh, oops, I need my load screen widget. So anyways, um, we'll come back to that. So, so what we need now is to uh, create, uh, in my case I have it saved in a different folder because this was a previous version of this that I was working on, but it didn't turn out to uh, work properly. Um, it would bug out when you package the game and it would still lose your nav mesh data when you would uh, when you fully cook it even if you had things turned off it would recook it and it would screw up with the nav mesh so uh, you're gonna want to create a you know, simple loading screen widget uh, you know uh, mine is just this it's just a couple of bars and a progress bar um, I'm putting a progress bar in here because uh, we're going to increment this and this is kind of going to act like a progress bar. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty self-explanatory. 
but uh, when you put one in make sure that you go ahead and you give it a name that you'll remember in my case load progress and it should be auto flagged as a variable um, that's it I literally have nothing in here you don't need anything in here you can control it directly uh, the event driven uh, you never really want to have things on tick if you can avoid it like absolutely avoid it like the plague when it comes to widgets and stuff like that there's just no need um, so once you've created that uh, that widget and saved it make sure that you know you right click save whatever is save your widget uh, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna come in here into your game instance this is uh, the game instance that we created earlier and you're gonna want to just create two new custom events I'm sure most people know how to do that just you know custom event give it a name uh, my case I chose trigger loading screen and uh, you know, trigger loading screen destruction so it could be whatever it could be a and B it doesn't matter so you're gonna want to create a loading screen widget and then you're gonna pick your uh, widget that you created and we go ahead and promote this to a variable it makes it easier for dealing with it later um, and then uh, we go ahead and we add this to the viewport make sure that you have a, a reference to it so um, or you could just do it that way it doesn't matter but it's handy to have this uh, saved as a variable and then go ahead and create a second custom event and you know plug this in uh, just get a reference to your loading screen widget and from there you can just say remove from parent and you know that way you're not trying to peck around through here with remove from because it won't show up and then you'd have to show this and then you'd have to click that you know it's just it's easier to just drag from this and get the context sensitive uh, menu so once that's done go ahead and save it and compile it and you're done in here you won't have to come back to here so um, in terms of the level uh, I just call this the actual level uh, it's, yeah this was yet another level stream test and that's why I just kind of jokingly named these that um, so you're gonna want to create various levels in my case I just chose these ones you could pick two you could pick one it doesn't matter uh, if you want to have a progress bar you need something that progresses and when you have you know one two three four five six of these sub levels uh, you know 100 divided by 6 is going to give you a number a uh, little less than 20 so uh, percent per level segment so ultimately you know you're going to end up with um, you know your persistent level you could even start out in a regular level that you've created and from there you could go through and select actors like this and then when you right click or well, not right click you would open the level that you want to put them in just double click it so it's highlighted and bolted like that and then when you right click you can go in and there should be an option for uh, oh these are already in that whoops uh, so you open up a different one and then when you right click it you can choose this option right here move selected actors to level so it makes it handy and then when you're kind of sorting through and you're trying to figure out what all uh, what all is where um, hang on I actually I should leave my lighting on um, you can uh, you know view that through the uh, world browser which hang on a second this is kind of messing up on me right here yeah you know you can go through and you can view what's left after you've turned off things um, you can see what all's in each level that way if you really want to so um, but I'm gonna have to cut this video now because this is a trial version of Bandicam and uh, I'll see you in the next video